Hello and welcome to Writing for Publishing, a workshop that was put on for the Associated Schools of Construction's International Journal of Construction Education and Research by the Editorial Office. My name is Andrew McCoy and I am the Editor-in-Chief. Today's workshop agenda includes a quick introduction to the journal, uh, a discussion of writing sequencing and the order of writing for your papers, uh, then getting into details of sequencing, including the details around abstract, introduction, literature review, methodology, findings and discussions, summary and conclusions, and then other suggestions uh, and some quick information about the journal beyond that. The International Journal of Construction, Education and Research publishes original works. We disseminate and preserve research results. We, can, uh, we publish works that contribute to the body of knowledge of construction, education and research. Typically, these need to be scientific in nature. Uh, we publish archival papers with documented support for conclusions, not personal opinions of authors. And from time to time, we invite a special issue or an invited paper where we solicit knowledge that is on a specific focus or special uh, topic. Here are some of the topics of interest for the journal. Our scope uh, for the journal embraces pedagogical and industry content through a broad spectrum of construction related topics that are not limited to necessarily materials and methods, estimating, contracts, construction law, labor, equipment, productivity, workforce development, project management, and the list goes on, including specialty subcontracting, safety, and case studies. Uh, all of these topics uh, are just suggestions, really, as to the scope of the journal. We would love to review any content that might touch on uh, pedagogy and uh, construction management and education. Now that we've, we've discussed the journal, uh, we're going to get into a little bit about the uh, sequencing of writing and the order in which you might place your paper. We suggest that you write the body of the paper first. That would include the literature review, the methodology, uh, and the findings and discussion sections. And then you go back and you work on writing the introduction. Some people like to write the introduction first. We'll discuss that later where you can go back and use all of the body to refocus the introduction even after you've written it. Um, but then after all of the, those pieces have been completed, you would come through and do a summary and conclusions. And finally, you'd write your abstract, but not till the very end. To begin writing the body of the paper, you need to first establish the problem statement and the context of the problem. Uh, you notice on this slide, we have a red box that contains line numbers. Well, that is so that you can compare the um, content of the slides that we're talking about to a specific paper that you can download uh, that has been provided to us by the authors as an example of uh, all these different um, topics within the slides that we're going to talk about. Uh, you can also download that paper on the website um, outside of this slide presentation. But we will show you some examples within the slide presentation as well. And we're going to give you in green uh, in the, um, uh, the ellipse there, uh, we're going to show you different typical reviewer comments that drive some of these uh, discussions that we're going to talk about in the topics and the slides. Uh, when you're thinking about the problem statement and the context, you, you want to ask questions like, what is the issue here and why do we care about it? So that you can write about that and put it into uh, a context that the readers are going to want to see, but also it relates it back to the literature and, and what's happening in the literature so that, to give you your problem statement. And on this slide, we provide you with an example from the paper that's clipped from that paper uh, that you can also download and, and look through of the lines that we're discussing. Uh, here, this section is addressing the issue uh, for the problem statement and the context around it. So just take a minute here and, and read through that and then move on to the next slide. The next thing you want to consider after the problem statement when you're working through the body of the work uh, and looking at literature review is uh, what is the background and, and are there expected results to the paper that you need to think about early on in this process? Are there key papers published? Uh, summarize the status of the topic prior to being described in the paper. Uh, and that's, that's important because you need to set a point of departure. Right? So the current literature is stating um, and has studied this topic in these areas. Your paper and your topic will depart from that literature 
or from other studies in this way. Now also consider limitations of the work and be very clear about them in this section. The next slide, uh, please look through the lines from the paper that are given as an example and then um, we'll see you in the following slide. When you start writing the body of the paper itself, you want to first review the relevant literature uh, that has uh, covered this topic before. Uh, it can be broad in scope, but also uh, you need to discuss seminal works that have driven uh, a lot of the discussion around the topic. And you also want to try to discuss focused works that might be similar to what you've done, but how you're going to be a little bit different and build off of those. In the body, you're also going to have the methodology and propose what that would be for the work. And then you're going to include the analysis of the paper as well. Here you can see some reviewer comments. Uh, you know, sometimes we reject papers because uh, what, we, what we're saying in the comment is the paper could be improved by enhancing its literature review and just include findings of similar studies um, from other uh, either developed or developing countries, especially as we publish more internationally and around international topics. When working on the literature review, you want to have a synopsis of prior relevant work. Um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, you want to include seminal works or state an absence of that if there's none. Um, and then you want to have a description of major published findings as well. You're going to build off of these later and you'll revisit them when you do your analysis and your conclusion sections to show, well, this work um, deviates from previous work in this way or it supports previous work in this way. These are the types of sentences that you're going to have later um, that you need to build off of and you're setting the stage for that here in the literature review. The next slide we give you some examples um, and a, uh, you can look in the paper to see the table as an example of how this has been done particularly well in this paper. In your methodology section, you want to discuss what methodological approach was taken. You want to justify that thoroughly. <clears throat> In the next slide, you have an example of uh, some writing that shows a lot of that. Um, then you want to also map your literature variables to the survey instruments or interviews. Uh, anything that you're using that would use kind of common terminology for your topic uh, or the industry, you want to make sure that you show how that comes from background and literature review. Uh, and it's not something that is uh, really made up by the author or uh, the study participants. Then you want to also talk about uh, what data were collected and how those data were collected and go into detail. This is a very common area where um, papers will be rejected because the authors do not spend enough time working through the methodology and discussing uh, all the different sides of it, whether it's quantitative or qualitative. Case studies, for example, you do really still have to have a lot of good detail as to um, your techniques and your methodology. For the findings and analysis of the paper, you want to start by having a description of the data that you collected. Then you want to actually go into sections where you analyze uh, the data that was that were collected. Um, and then you want to actually tie that analysis back to the literature. It's very important. Um, does your work agree or disagree with the prior art and, and why? Um, we have examples of these three items uh, in the next three slides as well. When writing the summary and conclusions or recommendations section, you want to start with summarizing the facts, uh, talk about the limitations of the work as well, and then you conclude uh, the consequences that need to be supported by the body of research that you've, uh, that you've worked on or that you have either supported in past research 
uh, or you've disagreed with fast research as well. And then typically you want to provide some kind of perspective on the significance of your work um, in place it into the context of existing work and then talk about future work and where this work might go. Uh, the next four slides provide examples as well for your reference. When writing your summary and conclusions or your recommendations, uh, we get a lot of reviewer comments that just simply state that the conclusions are weak, that they are not representative of uh, the study and the findings. And so you need to make sure that you really build off of your study and that the conclusions that are presented are based on that, they, they're supported by your study, that you're not going well beyond that and overstating uh, your conclusions. With the International Journal of Construction Education and Research, it's also important to note that we are typically looking for conclusions that uh, draw the research back into the classroom and the practice of the classroom. Uh, so we're interested in uh, educational implications as well, and that needs to be stated and emphasized. Okay, now it's time to go back and write the abstract. When you're writing the abstract, you need to make it short and concise. Uh, it needs to follow the guidelines of the journal, uh, which are on our website. Um, but also, just quickly, you need to state the issue. You need to state what, the, what you have done, what is the process that you've used for your study. Uh, quickly, what are the results and how is it significant? And also, once you've written the abstract, it's important to go back and reconsider your original problem statement and the context in the introduction uh, where you started originally. This is how you can start to flush out the introduction itself in that section and write it, but also put more context now that you've gone through the body of the work and you know your conclusions. Um, be specific about the issue and be specific why we care about it and what your contribution to the current issue might be. In the next slide we give you an example from the paper. And now for some basic guidelines assembled through uh, the members of the editorial office. Please write clearly and concisely. It's difficult to read papers that continue to um, have wording that might not be clear, but also doesn't get to the point. Um, spell correctly and use good grammar, proper grammar. Uh, here are some examples of what we mean by that. That's a, a, a basic uh, expectation that we have and often can be a reason for rejection. Uh, minimize the use of acronyms and jargon. If you introduce an acronym, please uh, spell it out and tell us what the acronym stands for. And then uh, Strunk and White is a great reference for these basic guidelines. As far as writing recommendations, uh, typically we look for characteristics that include a well-written paper that's focused. Uh, it's very transparent. The description of what is happening in the paper is very clear. Um, it, the study is self-contained. It doesn't require that there are multiple studies, uh, that uh, this is part of, you know, part one of multiple studies, but it actually is one study that's easily explained and you can walk through all the different steps. Uh, use limited use of acronyms and jargon, as we said before, but we also recommend um, that you actually take the paper, uh, you write it, and then you set it aside for a little while. Come back to it read it, revise it, ask possibly a colleague or a mentor to look through it, and then you uh, perform a final step of revision. There are some common causes for papers being declined by the reviewers. One very simple one is improper format, uh, but often people do not, uh, authors do not provide a problem statement, they don't provide proper conclusions or any conclusions at all, and sometimes those conclusions are based on personal opinion. Um, 
We also will have uh, instances with vague sources of data and a methodology that is not explained thoroughly. Other items that you might consider are flawed data analysis. Make sure that your data analysis uh, is straightforward, that we can understand it. Um, try to have clear writing again, not ambiguous writing. Um, sometimes the review of literature will be very limited and we expect it to be thorough and have seminal sources typically. And uh, often the authors will not spell out the contribution to the body of knowledge. And finally, um, one part that's very important after you've been accepted through the initial process of review but you've received feedback, um, please make sure that you track the changes and any resubmission that you have for your paper follows those previous reviewer comments and tells us how you have um, tried to address those in the new, uh, the new version that you submitted. We ask you when you're writing in the journal to refer to our tips for writing technical papers. It is on our website, and here's the link for that website. Uh, we hope that it's helpful. It explains in detail a lot of what I've been discussing today in this workshop and slide presentation. And um, we hope that you've uh, learned from this presentation, and we look forward to your uh, submittals. Thank you so much.